40 years ago today, the explosion heard around the world. Mount St. Helens erupted, the most destructive volcanic eruption in U.S. history, destroying 200 miles of land and killing 57 people. Since then, Mount St. Helens has taught us a lot about the volcanoes around us and how the surrounding land recovers after a major eruption. John Hopperstad joining us live from Seattle this morning with more. John? Yeah, Bill, and we're uh, taking a look at Mount Rainier here this morning behind us because that is an active volcano. And scientists say it's not if, but when it will erupt. And we know that research from St. Helens has helped scientists predict and prepare for the inevitable eruption of Rainier. And this morning we're talking with a researcher who's been at St. Helens since its eruption, studying its effects over the last 40 years. Charlie Cristofoli is now, he now works with the Forest Service, but in 1980, he was an ecology major in college who flew on a helicopter into the landscape just after Helen's Blue. He says it was like landing on the moon, destruction immense, and he didn't think anything could survive, but right away, he saw life, vegetation coming up through the rubble, evidence of gophers and frogs still in the area and alive. So he's continued to study the resurgence of life in what he calls a living laboratory. You know, I'm taking this anniversary as a time to, to really think about the lessons learned from this volcano, to view it as a teacher on how our natural systems respond to these big catas cataclysmic events that are so profoundly alter the forest that we think of as iconic in the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. Charlie says the discovery of life just after the eruption created a new foundation in his field, what he calls the role of biological legacies, that life is tenacious and life will persist. He says what they've learned in St. Helens is helping other countries in terms of forestry, nature, agriculture, quality of water as well. And of course, it will help understand future eruptions and prepare for them as well. And that's certainly something that a lot of us think about with Mount Rainier just hovering in the background there. Bill. All right, John, thank you. Let's uh, check in with MJ and some details.